Hello, everyone. Thank you for having me. Uh, this talk is about navigating urban scenarios with the Map Store 3D tools. Um, I'm Lorenzo Natali from GeoSolutions. And uh, GeoSolutions is a company that works, uh, international company that works in, uh, uh, that has bases in Italy and the US. We have uh, clients uh, all around the world. And we are core developers of uh, many open source products like uh, GeoServer, MapStore, GeoNode, and GeoNetwork. And we provide professional support for all these products. We also provide, provide professional trainings and we develop custom solutions and uh, we offer um, enterprise support services to these uh, service, to these, to the, for these soft softwares. And uh, we, strongly, we strongly support open source, and uh, we actively participate on all these communities uh, for open standards and open, uh, and open source software for GIS in general. This talk is about uh, navigating and uh, seeing you, um, use, typical use case scenarios in 3D using MapStore. So let's see what's MapStore first. MapStore is a nightly modular open source uh, framework that allow you to, um, uh, to share maps, uh, dashboards uh, with maps, and uh, also uh, web pages, the uh, GeoStories with maps too, so uh, on the web in general. It's uh, an application that you can install on your server, and uh, it uh, provides uh, and interact with several uh, open source uh, standard or uh, like WMS, WNTS, uh, TMS, and so on. And uh, sorry, it, it, it is also mapping library agnostic. That is a cool word to say that uh, it's independent from the library used. Uh, actually, MapStore support open, lay open layers, uh, leaflet, and cesium. And um, for the future, if uh, one of these uh, library, for instance, is uh, uh, closed source or uh, if uh, stop maintained, uh, we can switch to the next library without uh, losing all the features of MobStore. Uh, in the next, in these two years, uh, we developed a lot of the features in 3D uh, uh, for MobStore. In particular, we, uh, sorry, we, uh, we updated Cesium in order to provide support to 3D tiles. We implemented the tool called uh, MapViews that is uh, a very cool uh, tool that I will show you. And uh, we implemented the 3D measurement tools so you can, uh, uh, if you have a 3D tiles or something in 3D, in general you can uh, measure uh, walls or whatever in 3D. We added styling of vector data, data on, uh, in 3D, so you, if you have your WFS services, you can uh, style them in 3D, providing support for uh, model for styling using uh, GLTF uh, uh, or um, models or IF, uh, IFC models. Uh, so you can, if you have a point, for instance, in, uh, in WFS, you can add the model in 3D and put it on your 3D map. Uh, we also provided in the latest, latest uh, version the annotations, uh, editing in 3D, uh, so you can also draw in 3D on the map directly using MapStore without any graphical tool. And uh, we uh, provided, the as I said, the styler for vector uh, WFS data, and you have also support for attributes. So, for instance, if you have a, a population um, uh, attribute, you can um, extrude the geometries uh, with the eight uh, proportional to the um, population and do a cool map that shows the population in various regions. But uh, let's see, in, in this presentation, I will show you in particular three typical scenarios that you can find in uh, 3D in, uh, in the, uh, for providing data about uh, a city. Uh, um, how to test this, uh, in particular, I will use the, the, the tool use, uh, called MapViews. Uh, how can you uh, use it? Of course, you have to download MapStore. Uh, you can download it from the 
a website, the GitHub uh, release, uh, and you can install it uh, with, with a binary, with the word file, or with Docker. And then uh, uh, create a new map as a login as administrator, of course, uh, or as a user that can edit the maps. Uh, create a new map and switch to the 3D. Then we have a, a new uh, button here that uh, will show you a bar for navigating uh, these map views. The map views uh, tool is essentially an interactive uh, presentation that allow you to do several steps and each step can uh, zoom uh, or uh, move the camera to a particular position, switch on and off the layers, uh, show some description, uh, and uh, let's see the typical workflow to edit these uh, map views. As well as you adjust the camera to the position you want to create the first view, you can click on add button there in the toolbar and you will uh, see the, uh, you will create the first view. Uh, then you can turn on the uh, editing by clicking on the pencil, and you will see all the things that you can edit of this view. Uh, in particular, you can edit the title and the description that you can uh, uh, show uh, when you are presenting this uh, view. Uh, the, you can edit the position of the camera by catching the posi current position or by inserting coordinates manually. You can uh, uh, decide the duration of the animation and other options. You can uh, style, uh, you, uh, you can create a mask for the, three da for the data that you have, so you can crop uh, the data, for instance, the 3D tiles or uh, the globe. Uh, to show a particular part only without the, inter in, in the rest of the globe. Or, or the opposite, you can uh, put an all in the, in, the, in the 3D tiles in order to put somewhere el something else there. Uh, then you can set the globe transparency. This is particularly useful if you have to show something underground or underwater. And uh, uh, for each layer of the map, you created in map store you can add uh, map uh, various type of layers wms wfs and so also 3d tiles you can choose uh, to clip how to clip each of them based on the geometry and uh, you can uh, um, decide the opacity or to display it them or not and of course to clip also in the inverse way so you can uh, 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 do, for instance, uh, one layer and clip and do a hole for um, showing the other layer that is clipped in the inverse way and showing uh, replacing some pieces of uh, 3D tiles with your things. Let's see the first example. Uh, the first example is about uh, uh, showing a new project in urban, in urban planning. Uh, this uh, map view has been created uh, for uh, the um, municipality of Genoa. Uh, gives an overview of the, uh, of the project area. In general here, you can see that there is a title and a description that shows the information about the current uh, slide. And uh, here in particular, we have uh, in red the areas that will be object of the uh, work and in yellow the areas that are particularly interesting in uh, interesting in the next slide here we replace uh, the, the 3d tiles of genoa with the uh, model with the gltf model of the project that we are going to implement this is particularly uh, is designed by renzo piano and this uh, is the new prominent of uh, the, the new a uh, new part of genoa uh, on the on the on the sea uh, this is the final result. As well as you click play, you can animate it. And uh, after the time you decided, it will move to the area. And then uh, it will replace the uh, 3D tiles with the, with the new model. After that, uh, there are other slides, like, for instance, to show the, uh, the, the terrain below. The, to, 
to see the what's happening underground in order to to explain exactly how this is uh, sustained, how it is sustained by the by the underground. Here, in the same presentation, uh, they wanted to introduce also uh, a, a visualization of the, and reconstructions of the historical uh, promenade, uh, historical promontory of the Genoa city. This, uh, this promontory is not there anymore. The only thing remained is the, the one in red. And uh, in the next uh, slide, you can see that uh, you can uh, replace the three details on the center and uh, uh, display how the, 3D, uh, the old 3D promontory was originally placed, with uh, providing also a picture here of the, of the, uh, of the historical uh, trace of this promontory that is not uh, that doesn't exist anymore the second example is to show the um, uh, relations between different levels of the city genova in particular is very uh, has a lot of mounts and uh, in and they have also the underground the underground uh, that's particularly important for mobility so <laughs> here there is a in this new view uh, there is a, a representation of the um, of the uh, Genova subway. I, here you can see the stations and uh, um, in the next slide you can clip in order to show the three tiles uh, of every station uh, and uh, highlight the subway station with, uh, for instance, the WFS, the, the, light, or the red highlighting is a WFS layer. Instead, the subway is a GLTF 3D model. Uh, as you can see here, we adjusted also the globe resolution in order to, uh, to show the underground and uh, uh, the, the, um, the tube, or, uh, as it is in English. <laughs> And uh, here, um, th these, uh, these are not only uh, animations, they are fully interactive. So a user at a certain time can uh, go forward and backward, and uh, it can stop, of course, and he, he can, they can start measuring, for instance, a wall that are particularly interested. For instance, they want to uh, do a, a sketch on the, <laughs> on the wall, and they want to measure the, the size it, o of it. And uh, um, as I said, the clipping uh, can be inverted in order to display uh, particular parts on, uh, in the undergrounds. Then, in the third example, I wanted to have fun because, uh, <laughs> because uh, doing presentation is uh, boring. And uh, so um, I wanted to uh, use only Map Store without any 3D tiles or uh, any other tools uh, and uh, do something interesting, more or less, in the, the time I had. <laughs> so uh, what I did is uh, trying to provide a map of the uh, Post4G Europe, only drawing, uh, of course, only Map Store and OpenStreetMap on the background. And I, I wanted to do a 3D presentation for the uh, Post4G event. So I turned it on uh, 3D. I turned it on the uh, editing tool that allow you to create several layers uh, in 2D or 3D for... Uh, uh, and then I started. I started adding some markers here and there. The first uh, were the stations in order to get information about uh, uh, how to arrive to the ev event. Uh, for the markers, you can customize the symbolizer and the icon, the sides and so on. Uh, so, for instance, for the station, I choose the icon of the station, of course. And then I started uh, drawing polygons in order to um, uh, follow up the uh, the lines uh, on the, uh, of the buildings involved in this 
conference. Uh, I started with first. Uh, I draw it directly on the map. Then I use the styler for extrusion in order to do a sort of building. And of course, I colored it in red because I have seen the, um, that, is, that, the, that the building was red. <laughs> so, uh, I use it the same color. And if you uh, want to have fun, the, the 3D uh, functionality has also the uh, third, co the eighth, but editing polygons one by one by, uh, it was very, very annoying. So I preferred to use the extrusion directly. Uh, then I started uh, editing the second building and color edit two, and then the third. Uh, the, the um, buildings are very simple, so it, it does, it didn't took me too much. Uh, and then I added uh, some markers, uh, some additional markers for social events, like this. And I added some text annotations. As, as you can see here, you can configure with the conf uh, some annotations with leading line. You can see here the, um, there is a leading line and the text is uh, in, the, in, the, in the air. So it's very cool uh, from the 3D point of view. I completed the presentation by adding an area with the world extrusion, also to display the world extrusion uh, functionality in order to well identify the uh, area of the, where the presentation is. Uh, now it's visible. And uh, this is the final result of the map. So you can publish this map as it is. It has a cool uh, legend with all the symbols corresponding to the points. You can see the, the text notes with the leading lines. Uh, and I can publish it as it is, uh, okay. And, uh, but I can do one step more and uh, create a map view using this layer these layers and turning on and off things in order to do a presentation. So I did, uh, I created the map, um, map view. The first slide, uh, let's say, the first view is uh, from the top. So it, we give the illusion that is a 2D map, a simple 2D map. And with the uh, arrival po point, with the introductionary page, sorry. Then we switch to 3D with an animation. So it goes to 3D and uh, it's cool. <laughs> Trust me. Uh, and you see the arrival points and the conference are highlighted. You don't see anything else, so you can, you can keep the people concentrated on that. Then we zoom to the conference area. Now you can see the three buildings. Then I turn off the wall and I uh, change the translucency of the two building, buildings on the side. And uh, uh, show the registration label, and then I zoom out. I finally zoom out uh, to uh, display the the social events. And this is the presentation. It took me uh, something like uh, ten minutes for drawing the map and ten minutes uh, to making the, um, the the map views. And this is the final result. As you can see, this is the first slide. Then is uh, switches to 3D, uh, shows uh, the arrival point. It zooms to the conference area, so you can see the three buildings. Then it zooms to, to the main building in order to guide you to the registration area. And then it zooms back to, the, uh, to, the so to show the social events. And as I said, uh, this has been done only using map store drawing tools, and uh, and that's it. And uh, okay, and I finished. That's it. So we have still uh, room for questions. Hello. Uh, you mentioned you have support for I IFC files, and I guess the new project in Genoa is also like from an architect or somebody, yeah. and it came from an IFC file. Um, did you convert it, or do you have direct support to visualize and show 
IFC files? Or yeah. do you transport uh, and convert it to GLTF? A good question. In this version, it has been converted because the IDF support was not present yet. <laughs> so it was con converted in G uh, GTLF. But from the last version, we have support also to uh, directly to IFTS. Uh, in industrial uh, format, but without the, uh, I, I don't remember because I was not involved, but it can be used in styles for sure, uh, as a model, a 3D model that you can associate to some uh, features. So you can uh, load it from the, from the, uh, the, the whole model, um, as a model as a whole, or do you actually keep the individual attributes for the IFC example, IFC wall, IFC door, and you can style it in regards to the IFC attribute, which was yeah. the original? Uh, I'm not sure about that, but I think that uh, the attributes are supported, for, su for sure for WFS. I don't remember, honestly, if they are supported, because it's a really new thing that wasn't involved fully in the development. Anyway, everything is documented on MapStore website. So if you have a quest interesting question, I will ask to, <laughs> to confirm it. Maybe if you write on the mailing list uh, you can, of MapStore, for sure you can have a detailed uh, qu answer. Sorry if I can, cannot answer. Okay, thank you. More questions here. Thanks for the nice presentation. I have a question on the third example that you showed. Yeah. Um, the features that you added to the map, are they kind of temporarily stored in map store or is it also possible to store them in a database, for example? Yeah, if you want to use WFS, you can you load them from, from WFS. In this example, I draw it, uh, it online and in, the, the, in this case, uh, they are stored on map store. The, you have the two options. You can use the, uh, WFS, the, the editor of MapStore for storing things in WFS and uh, so you, or you can load them from the database or you can draw them directly and in that case, the database, I mean GeoServer, that provides WFS, that provides the, uh, to MapStore the, the features. Or in MapStore, you, can, you have the both, both the options. Thank you. Thank you too. Other questions? More questions, exactly. Uh, if not, this is not the case. Many thanks.